Hey, this is Brian Orr with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRschool.com. I'm doing this video in order to answer a question that we get a lot of, is which is how do you properly test the operation of a ductless system? How can you tell that it's doing what it's supposed to do? And as you know, when you're setting up a ductless system, you set the charge by line length, you weigh it in, that's the right way to do it, but you still want to be able to check the system and make sure that it's actually delivering on the promise that you told the customer it would do. It's doing the job it's designed to do. And delivered capacity is a great way to do that. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Testo Smart Probes, the 410i vein anemometer, 605i thermal hygrometers in order to do this. Uh, on my house, I have a Mitsubishi MXZ system, which is a multi-head ductless system. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can use these tools in order to measure delivered capacity, which I understand a lot of you aren't going to necessarily do, but it's a good thing to know how to do in case you get to that point. Now, two things you need to know. CFM, that's the amount of air, the actual cubic feet of air per minute. So we got to figure out the CFM. I'm going to show you how to use the fan charts as well as how to use the vane anemometer to do that. And then finally, we get to delivered BTUs, how much actual heat is being moved by this unit. There's a couple different ways that this can be done. And the most difficult part is actually calculating the CFM. So I'm going to show you how to do that from the system specs, which is generally going to be more practical. But I'm also going to take a shot at doing it actually at the front of the unit itself. So it's an MSZ GL12NA that we're going to be looking at. You can see that the CFM are listed here, and it's actually the same across the board for the 6,000 BTU, 9,000 BTU, and 12,000 BTU, which is kind of interesting because if you look here where it says moisture removed in pints per hour, you see in the really small unit here, it's like nil. It shows nothing, and then it goes up as the capacity increases because you can see that the actual CFM, the air produced from this unit, doesn't change. It's the same for all three sizes. So it stands to reason that with the higher capacity, you do quite a bit more latent removal. Uh, it's interesting what you find when you look into the specs on specific units. So if you were to put in a 6,000 BTU unit, you'd be producing the same airflow as a 12, and in turn, you would have very little latent removal on that system. I thought that was just an interesting thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into high speed, so not very high. So the way that uh, Mitsubishi lists this is very high, high, medium, low, and then whisper mode or, or very or quiet mode. And so we're going to measure this in high mode. You also see here that it says a dry coil and then a wet coil. So these are wet coil CFM ratings and these are dry coil. I've had the system off, so we're going to start with dry coil. Now, I could use just these CFM ratings and they would be accurate. So we're going we're gonna to use these, but I'm also going to use the 410i small vein anemometer to measure and demonstrate how that would work as well in case you had a unit that you didn't have a spec sheet on and you didn't know what the exact CFMs were. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fan to high. That would be high mode right there. And I have it set to 68. I've got the 410i and it's already synced up as you can see here. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it on a volume flow outlet. And I'm going to take a traverse reading, and I've already gone into the settings here, configure measurement. I've set up the length and width, the width to 2.5 and the length to 24 inches, and I'll show you how I came up with that. When I looked at this, I initially had the veins in, and then that would kind of mess up my free area. So I had to decide whether or not I was going to measure here and kind of make this my baseline, or whether or not I was going to measure on the inside. And I did a couple tests, and I found out that the inside was a little, was a little more accurate. The challenge was is that I had this little piece here in the center, and so I couldn't go all the way across in a smooth motion. So what I'm going to do is actually take the calculation in two different pieces. But if you see here, this is where I came up with two and a half, so two and a half here. And then when you go across, this is where I came up with the 24 inches. So actually, more like 24 and a quarter, but it's, it's close. Now I also had to figure in what is my free area, and I have no calculation for free area on this. So I, I did a couple tests um, at a couple different speeds, and I came up with 95%. 410i here, it's already on, it's already synced up. I've got it set up, as you can see here, to 95% free area, 2.5 inch width, 24 inch length on a rectangular, and I'm going to set it up on a timed average traverse. So I'm going to start, the, the vein needs to be over the surface, and it needs to be as close as possible usually a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch away from the point that I'm reading. So I'm going to start right there and I'm going to press play. If you can see down here at the bottom, 
of this. I'm going to press the play button. And then I'm going to slowly paint this entire surface, kind of using my finger as a guide to keep the same distance. I'm going to paint this entire surface with the vein anemometer. Try to keep about the same speed. I don't have the world's most steady hand. So then I hit pause when I get over here. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to hit play again. I'm going to attempt to keep about the same speed that I did before. So that way I don't wait one side over another. Another thing that you'll notice is I set the internal veins to be straight. Which is going to give me a little more accurate reading. Alright, so now I hit pause. So I've hit, I've hit pause here. So now I'm going to hit the stop button and see what we come up with. So the reading that we got was 771 feet per minute average, 305 CFM. Now let's compare that to what we have on our chart. We're in this range here, so for a dry coil, you would expect to see 321, and for a wet coil, you'd expect to see 286. We are running in cooling. Um, we're probably more on the dry side than the wet side, but you can see we're right in that range. I mean, we're very, very close to what we're looking at, which, which proves to be fairly accurate. So now we're going to go ahead and use the 605Is, both of them, and uh, use it in order to measure our cooling capacity. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them both on, and you'll see at first they'll, they'll flash orange, and then they'll flash green, and that's when they sync up. And I've actually already set them up within the app, and so I've put an S and an R for supply and return on them so that I can remember which is which. But I'm going to show you how it's set up in the app. So one nice thing about the app is, is you can view just the basic view here, which will show you the readings from all of your different devices. So it's showing me all three of them simultaneously. It just gets a little confusing if you have a bunch of smart probes connected at once. So we're going to go to cooling and heating power, which is how we're going to calculate our total system capacity. As you can see right now, we're got very little going on because they're both essentially reading the same thing. And one test that I always do is I just set them close to each other and just make sure that they are pretty close. And you can see we're within 0.3 of a degree Fahrenheit and we're within 0.1 percentage relative humidity, which tells me that they, they're fairly well calibrated because they're reading calibrated to one another. They're definitely within range. All right, now one little trick that I played here, I'm going to set this on top of my mirror, is I made a... I took, a, I took a hanger and I made a little bracket here from, for holding this, which that's a, that's a nice little factory feature Mitsubishi can add in there. So that, that holds that in the airstream and there's definitely flow at that point. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it on top where the return is drawing in. So I've set that thing down to 65 degrees, so it should go to pretty much max capacity. Now. With ductless systems, it gets a little bit confusing because on a ductless system, and especially with this one, this is an MXZ system, so it's a two-head system. I've actually got a, a vertical air handler upstairs that ties up the same system. Getting the actual factory capacity on this can be a little tricky, so I'm not even going to bother. This is a 12,000 BTU nominal system, and I'm just going to see if we're getting close to 12,000 nominal BTUs. So, first thing I need to do, though, is I need to enter in the CFM. Right now, I've got 1,400 CFM, which is clearly wrong. So, we're going to go in and configure measurement, and we're going to enter in what it actually specifies here on the sheet. So, we're going to, we're going to say wet coil, because now it's going to be running for a little bit. So, we're going to go, to, we're going to go down to 364 CFMs. 364 CFM. It's on, su it's on supplier. This is actual output CFM. And you can see the supplier is dropping, but you can see right now we're producing 7,500 BTUs an hour. We're going to let it run a little bit, come back, and see what we have in a few minutes. All right, so right now you can see we're running 8,500 BTUs. And what I found interesting was even when I had it set at 65 degrees, when I set it down further, it still actually came down further because it was only producing about 7,000 BTUs previously at 65 degree setting. I set it at a 61 and it jumped up to over 8,000 BTUs. So that kind of illustrates why it's tricky to tell the capacity of a single air handler head on a ductless system, but it is still, it's nice information to know to be able to see that. As you're commissioning ductless systems, I think this is a really good test to do because it gives you a very practical rubber meets the road 
standard. You know, what, what, how many BTUs are you actually moving? And this, this gives you that measurement. So if you're installing a lot of ductless systems, you can compare them to one another, especially if you're installing single head, single condenser ductless systems. It's going to be a lot easier to look at the capacity tables on those types of systems than it is going to be in a multi-head system. But regardless, we now know how much, how many BTUs the system is producing. We also found that at least on this particular model, using you can measure airflow using a small vein anemometer with a measure of accuracy. And in this particular case, I'm using a 95% um, open, open area ratio. Um, but of course, you're going to have to, for the particular brands that you sell or brands that you service, you'd have to do a little bit more uh, practicing in order to see what the exact settings are for you. All in all, though, I think it's a good test to do and a good part of uh, a quality commissioning on a ductless system, especially since checking a charge using the traditional methods can be a little tricky, not from the standpoint of knowing whether or not the charge is correct, but from the standpoint of knowing whether the system is operating correctly. I had somebody say, well, just do it to manufacturers, set, up, set the charge to manufacturer specs and forget it, and that's all fine and good, but that doesn't tell you whether or not you have potentially um, some other issues. Another thing to mention is that if you create a baseline CFM, if you use a baseline measurement, a way that you measure your CFMs on all of your ductless systems, you'll also be able to tell more about how much airflow is actually being produced. So now if I, if I use the baseline of what I measured, now if I go back to this years from now and I measure my CFMs with an anemometer, I can see if maybe my blower wheel uh, becoming dirty or some other issue is causing low airflow. So I think there's some value in it. I'm Ryan Orr with HVAC School and HVACRschool.com, and this was made in conjunction with TrueTechTools.com. You can get all of these tools that I've displayed here at TrueTechTools.com, and you can use the offer code GETSCHOOLED for a great discount at checkout.